Hi guys, welcome back to Styled by Esther. Today we are finally going to be doing a wig styling tutorial. Obviously that's what I'm all about, that's what Styled by Esther started as. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to be doing a Marilyn Monroe, just a classic Marilyn Monroe wig. I'm going to show you how to set it um, and uh, some tips and tricks of what I use and how to do it. Um, how to set in rollers, steaming it, and then how to style it. So, before you get started, you're going to need a wig clamp, a wig block, a towel comb, some hairspray, rollers, uh, some hair clips and T-pins. With this one, I've actually already previously done it as a Marilyn, so you can sort of see it there. But I'm going to show you how to set the rollers in place to get that Marilyn wave. And I've already blocked the wig. Um, in the future, I'll probably do some videos of how to block the wigs. So, always start at the front and we'll work our way back to the bottom. So when you want to get a nice, what they call a C curve, or a, put something there or just eyeball a spot there. So here's our part, we've parted it to either side, whatever side you want, and then put the, uh, place your spot on the opposite side. So we're putting it there. The first roller we're going to go on from there on an angle, so a diagonal through there and to the back, and we'll set that in a large ish roller. I'm going to use my Swiss rollers this time. The second one we're going to go from that angle and we're going to go the opposite angle. So we're going, so the first one is going this way, the second one's going this way. Let's get a little bit smaller. Deep in. And then the third one is going to go straight across and it pretty much ends up going straight down. So the amount of hair you want to take is obviously whatever the length of your roller is so I'm just going to go as far back as the roughly the length well, a little bit shorter than the length of the roller. Sometimes this might happen where the edge comes out I just like to take a long these are just floristry pins just to hold that in place from it flipping off which they do from time to time. So that as you can see this one's going this way. This one is set going the opposite way. Follow that round and that's it going straight. So that's the C, that's the shape of the C. That makes sense. There's your C there. So that's a C section. The idea of that is this one will have the wave in it. Because we've done that one the opposite way, that will give the support to the first roller, the hair from the first roller, to have that height. The other side, uh, can be another C curve if you want to. Um, I like to tend, I tend to um, like to set mostly wigs going, setting backwards. So the rest I'm just going to set facing away from the hairline, more so than going straight down. If you set them all going straight down, so say we have a roller here and then a roller here, the gaps in between each roller will show, so there'll be gaps, there'll be holes there, which you need when you're styling it a bit harder to make it look smooth and all even. So if we style most of it, or set most of it going backwards and away from the hairline, it just avoids that. So if you do it on a slight, even on a slight angle, so then that way they're not going straight across, they're still going backwards. So always do the front first. I tend to get most of the hairline done before I start going to the next row. 
and make sure there's no knots in whatever section that you're working on. That just means when you take it out of the rollers, there won't be any knots in there and you can style it a lot easier. As you can see, we are going a larger roller for the, for the very middle part, very start, and getting smaller as we go down to the sides. So smallest on the sides and the back, um, unless you want a rear, an even wave all the way down, obviously in the longer way, longer we get it be an even wave, but we're going for a Maryland do, so um, we're going to start bigger and get smaller. So you can see these rollers that I'm using are Swiss rollers. Normally they have the little brush in them. Um, obviously that's for human hair when you're doing it, it holds the hair in place. Um, it just gets caught in a wig, so I just take them out and chuck them out, they go in the bin. Um, these are really good, they've um, got little grooves on there so it does um, hold the hair quite well in place. But I originally started, when I started styling wigs, I just got, I just used these ones. These are little really cheapo ones from $2 shop. Um, and they work really well. I, I, sometimes, yes, they do can tend to get caught when you're taking them out a little bit. You just need to be careful um, when you're taking the rollers out, but they work really well. But if you're starting out, those are a great choice or everything you really need. I've gradually, gradually been building up my collection of Swiss rollers uh, and they do tend to give a smoother result. So now what we're doing, if all the other rollers we're setting, we're gonna set them. So we're gonna set them just going back. So we're gonna set them here and we're gonna do a brick set. So a brick set, think of a brick wall, Let's get three. So the first one's gonna go in the middle here the two behind that is one's gonna go there and one's gonna go there. So what that does, that's a void. So say if we put them in a row like this and then the next row right next to it like that, um, there's gonna be a gap here because you're gonna be, it's synthetic hair. It's not, it doesn't work the same as real hair. Obviously real hair will move and the scalp is gonna go back to where it naturally wants to sit. But when we set this and steam this, that's it's plus, so it's set, that's where, it, that's it, that's where it's staying. So there will be a, a row, a line that'll be harder to disguise. This is the Marilyn wig, ready to steam. The brick set didn't work out as well as planned, but that doesn't really matter that much for this style, um, because it's all gonna be, you know, Marilyn's not perfectly neat anyway, and we're not getting finger waves or anything like that, so that's fine. Well, I ran out of green rolls, so I used one of the blue ones there. They're pretty much the same size. Uh, about halfway down, I changed to the smaller yellow rollers all the way down to the bottom. Um, and now all we need to do is steam the wig. So um, a lot of people steam their wigs different ways. If it's a DIY, if you don't have a garment steam, you can use hot water. Uh, so boil, boil a kettle or boil a pot and pour hot water over the whole wig. Um, I personally don't find that would that um, evenly distributes the heat. Um, so I use a uh, handheld garment steamer, this little one here. So what we're gonna do, what I like to do as well is um, spray the wig uh, with a bit of water, get it wet first. So, just a little spray bottle, one of those little, you would do little travel. Oh, you Great. That's fine, I've got others. <laughs> so, just spray the whole wig down and get it done. I just find this speeds up the steaming process um, because part of the steaming process is literally getting the hair, the wig wet to then put the heat into it. So this just saves me a shitload of time. It doesn't need to be super drenched, but just damp plastic bag. I like to use good old Aldi bag. They're nice and thick. I've got the front. 
face him towards me by steam the front first. So just hold the steam in there, steam in along the front, move it, wiggle it around a little bit. So you obviously you can't see the wig, but you know where the rollers are. So just sort of move it around, get them nice and hot. Maybe you know what I mean. So you, if you feel at the top, you can feel you're getting hot. And you want to spin it round to the back. And just pretty much, you can just hold the steamer at the bottom. Because of the bag, the steam's going to rise up, go to the top, uh, you know, like a little ecosystem. So that's going to heat up all the rolls on the top here. Just if you just feel, so I like to, obviously the bottom ones at the back are going to get really nice and hot because it's right there. Um, if you just feel at the top, um, as soon as it's hot enough that, say within two or three seconds, it, um, you know, you can't touch it anymore because it's quite hot, that's when it's ready. So obviously, just to explain the reason we're using steam, so synthetic wigs, technically it's a plastic, so if you put direct heat on it, like a curling iron or hot, uh, you know, hot rollers or whatever, it's, uh, it's going to melt. So um, you need to use indirect heat, so that's why we're using steam, or as I said, you can use hot water. A lot of synthetic wigs do say that they're you know, heat resistant up to a certain uh, temperature. I personally are uh, hesitant to use a curling iron or anything on a synthetic wig, no matter what it says. Um, even if it does withhold the heat and doesn't melt and, and break, um, I find that it sort of makes the fibers a bit stiff and not as soft and not as easy to style. So steam is the way to go with any synthetic wig. And now we're gonna take the bag off. The bag comes off, Woo! hot, 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 hot. So now we're going to let that cool and dry. Um, I normally leave it overnight, but uh, it's sort of middle of the afternoon. We've got, I'm gonna leave it for a few hours um, and uh, let it cool down and dry and then we'll come back and style it. So, um, see you soon.